there, we have a list of tech plans Nigeria's new president has promised to achieve. Also, the Real Chat GPT mobile app is now available for download. Instagram is kicking off a new advertising feature and CBN revokes licenses of digital bags. It's Bookie here and I'll be right back with details after this. Artificial intelligence company OpenAI has shared a major update on the mobile version of ChatGPT. After releasing the groundbreaking product on iOS for its users in the USA, OpenAI tweeted that the app is now available in more countries like Nigeria, Ghana, Namibia, United Kingdom, the UAE, France, Jamaica, and more. While the ChatGPT app is not yet available for Android users, OpenAI has said Android users are next. The ChatGPT app looks just like the website version and syncs your conversation history from phone to laptop. The mobile app also allows you to use voice to enter queries. Basic features on the ChatGPT app are free, but subscribers to ChatGPT Plus will have access to advanced capabilities and faster response time for a monthly fee. Last week, Tech City reported OpenAI CEO Sam Altman's visit to Nigeria, where he admitted to being concerned about overregulation of AI. Elsewhere, two months after testing ads in search results, Instagram has made a new addition to its advertising strategy. The social media platform now allows for ads in search results via the Instagram marketing API. This means that users will encounter advertisements while scrolling through the feed after tapping into a post from search results. This move by Instagram comes after the company's initial announcement in March, where they expressed their intention to target users who are actively searching for businesses, products, and content. With this update, users will now start seeing ads that are directly related to their searches. For instance, if you search for skincare, relevant ads will appear within the search result feeds. These ads can be easily distinguished from regular posts by the sponsored label prominently displayed beneath the account's name. According to the company, this advertising feature does not require an upgrade. Also, AOR, a prominent Nigerian digital bank, is facing a major setback that has left its customers unable to make transactions due to the revocation of its operating licenses by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The bank confirmed the issue in a statement posted on its official Twitter account and also assured customers that their funds are secure and active measures are being taken to address the matter with the CBN. Last Tuesday, the CBN revoked the licenses of 47 microfinance banks and 132 other financial institutions operating as microfinance banks, finance companies, and primary mortgage banks. The official gazette of the federal government, published on the CBN website, disclosed that these institutions lost their licenses due to reasons such as remaining inactive, insolvency, failure to render returns, or closing down operations. Additionally, they were found to have not been conducting the type of banking business for which their licenses were issued for a continuous period of six months. And before we go, Nigeria will today get a new president after the February 25th general election, which many regarded as inconclusive and largely violent. As Labour Party's Peter Obi battles it out in court and the election tribunal, here's a reminder of the new president's APC's Bola Ahmed Tinubu's tech plans for his four-year tenure. According to his manifesto, he has promised to create one million new jobs in the ICT sector within its first 24 months, develop policies that will train and build capacity among Nigeria's large and youthful population to encourage encourage them to offer outsourcing services like India, encourage the prudent use of blockchain technology in finance and banking, identity management, revenue collection, and the use of crypto assets. His manifesto also reads that the importation of smartphones, which cost the country millions of dollars, will be substituted with local assembly presented by the tech manufacturing sector. His government promises to ensure that the national broadband plan to deliver broadband services to 90% of the population is achieved by 2025. Finally, the Tinubu government has said it will incentivize technology hubs, accelerators, and angel investors. And with that, I've come to the end of today's news update. It's Vuki here saying thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for tech news, reviews, and other amazing tech content. And until next time, bye for now.